What's happening Trader Gang? Question for you. What's stopping you from buying an electric car? I mean, what's really stopping you? Even I, a V8 Mustang owner, nominated an EV as my pick in the recent Auto Trader New Car Awards, the Rory Reid category because there's a lot to love about EVs. You've got instantaneous torque, environmental consciousness, tax savings, all phenomenal reasons. So what's actually putting you off? Yeah, there's the whole cost thing, maybe, true. EVs do tend to cost more upfront, but they're getting more and more affordable all the time. And you know what? That's what finance is for, right? So what about infrastructure? Yeah, could be better. But things are improving all the time, and if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where you can install your own charge point at home, then 99% of people are pretty much gonna be covered for 99% of actual driving, trust me. What about range? Yeah, people think it's a big issue, but in reality, it's not how far an EV goes on a full battery, it's how long it takes to charge up and get you back on your way. Put it this way, if I go out in my Mustang and enjoy myself, I mean really, really enjoy myself. I might get 150 miles out of a tank. Does that make me anxious? Actually might make my wallet quiver a little bit, but I know that when I get to a filling station, even if it's busy, even if I take my time, use the facilities for a comfort break, get a coffee, grab a few bits for dinner, whatever, I can be done, fueled up and back on the road in what? Five minutes, 10 max? But what if I told you that you could have all of those advantages I mentioned before including ludicrous acceleration, saving the glorious planet we live on, an eye on the tax man, but you could also charge up your EV in the same time it takes to chuck a few liters of petrol or diesel into your existing ice car. That's the dream, right? And it's coming, possibly. I mean, it was in the news, so basically it has to be true. In case you missed the specific bulletin I'm talking about, then there's a company called StoreDot that have invented a battery that can be charged in five minutes. And this isn't some lab experiment. They've got them in production for drones, phones, and scooters, and are building them at production scale through a Chinese company called Eve Energy. And obviously their work has attracted backing from some big companies, including the likes of BP, Samsung, and TDK. So that's it then, we're sorted, problem solved. Well, we'll get to that in a second, but first of all, let me try and get my head around the problem and then explain it to you guys in a way that all of us can understand. Now, there's no getting away from it. Talking about batteries involves science. I got two GCSE grade Bs in science and I did a computer science degree, so I'm basically a professor in this stuff. So see if you can hang with me. In a battery, charged electrons go from your negative anode through the thing that you want to power, your light bulb, your Tesla, whatever, to the positive cathode. The lithium ion batteries that feature in most electric cars use various materials and chemicals in their construction, but what StoreDot has done is address the problem with the graphite commonly used for the negative electrode, which if you throw too much current through, gets too hot and causes well, problems. And that ultimately limits just how quickly you can charge a conventional battery. So, StoreDot technology uses charged nanoparticles, no idea either, in its electrodes in a funky material called geranium, which sorts the whole thing out. Are you sure about geranium? I'm sure, I'm pretty sure flowers won't work, bro. Oh, <laughs> my bad, germanium. Still don't know what that is, but I do know it's expensive, and ultimately, what StoreDot and others want to use is silicon for the electrodes, which achieves the same thing of being less temperature sensitive than graphite and can therefore take a much bigger current, charge quicker and get us to where we want to be. That dream of having a five minute charge. Still with me? Didn't think so. Bottom line is that five minute charging is technically possible and loads and loads of companies all over the planet are looking for ways to make it viable for electric cars because charging time is probably the biggest stumbling block to us finally dropping ice for EVs. But as I said, this technology is currently really expensive and the infrastructure we have here at the moment can't make the most of it. Using today's available charging station technology, StoreDot reckon they can deliver 100 miles of charge to a car battery in five minutes. So it's basically a quick splash and dash. Not bad though, in the future, with chargers that deliver more power, they think they'll be able to charge a car to full capacity 
in that five minute time span. So it looks for the time being like the existing tech is still a bit of a bottleneck, but it's getting better all the time. The 800 volt system in that Taycan Cross Turismo that I gave the Rory Reed Award future proofs it for a time when more powerful chargers become widely available. And being based on the same platform, the Audi e-tron GT also has the same and Hyundai. They've confirmed that their funky looking Ionic 5 e SUV that will also be able to take 800 volts, showing that technology is rapidly moving from the top end premium performance models and into the more mainstream products and brands. Oh, and let's not forget that 300 kilowatt ultra fast public charging is already here in places like the new Energy Super Hub Oxford. And if you plug an empty Tesla Model 3 into a V3 supercharger, you can get 75 miles of range in five minutes today. At the end of the day, the dream of batteries that charge fully in five minutes might not be there yet, but the reality of more options for getting you where you wanna go in an EV without sitting for hours at a charging point is a lot, lot closer than people think. Now, like I said at the beginning, most people with an electric car don't charge from a public charge point. That's petrol station mentality. Most of them charge at home and 99% of the time, for 99% of journeys, that's enough. For me, the most interesting part of all of this technology is the possibilities that will open up. If maximum range isn't a big deal because we can charge up super quickly and extend that range on demand, then EVs don't have to carry around a load of batteries. And that might mean we get lighter EVs that handle better. Imagine a Lotus, a proper Lotus or a Caterham or a Mustang, a proper Mustang powered by batteries without being noticeably heavier than the petrol versions. And less weight means even more efficiency and fewer batteries means they'll be cheaper and they'll charge quicker. So the future is looking bright for EV technology right now. Things are changing rapidly and the list of excuses that we have for not switching, well, that's getting smaller every few months. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you agree with me down below. And as usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Geraniums. Are you, are you trying to embarrass me? Are you serious?